What's up, everybody? We are here off my streaming rig. As you can see, I got the stuff down here. So, yeah, I figured I'd go ahead and record this. And today, we are going to make the best hard wallet. All right, we're going to take a little pause right here. And I just want to ask you, if you like the content that's going on, you know, watch the video. Don't forget to go down there, like, and subscribe. If you want to know whenever I put up a latest video, hit the little bell icon. Okay, it may not be the best, but I really like this design. I like making it. It's very simple, great for beginners. This design actually came from Black Flag Leather Goods. I'm going to put a link down there. Down there. Down there. Go, go check out his video. It's going to be a link to his video. He's got a link in there to get the pattern. For free. Go get it. Wait, hold up. Don't do it right now. Just watch this video and then go to it. Yeah. Anyways, this pattern, again, it is just is simple. Two pieces of leather folded over and stitched together. Then you can work your edges, make them all nice and shiny and stuff. Really simple. So today, I'm going to make one out of Crazy Horse Leather and Baroda Buffalo. Both of them I got from Springfield Leather Company, SLC. I got this stuff a while back, but... I like the way the combo may look, so stick around, let's get through this, let's see what it looks like at the end. Alright, so once you go over to Black Flag's website and download the pattern, you can print it out, it comes as a PDF, so just print it out and you can use that. Personally, I use cardstock. I also have some chipboard that I could actually glue this onto chipboard and make it even stiffer or the design's actually simple enough that I could 3D print a permanent template to trace around which is an idea I might do that so yeah that's that's the whole wallet right there these two pieces and like I said today we're going to be working with the Baroda Buffalo I really like the looks of this. It's, it's a little thin, little soft hand to it, but I think it'll work on the pocket side of it. This part right here, I think it'll really work there. Then we have some crazy horse leather. And I think this is called stone. The denim showed up really dark. It almost looks black. So I was wanting a really blue color, so I don't know. I'm still going to save this. I just want to go somewhere. But do the stone and the pocket in the Baroda. So I think that's going to turn out really nice. So see here. Let's get the front camera. It may show better. I don't know. Either one. It's just a dark gray. Or it's actually kind of lighter. It's not really that dark, but it's darker than the middle shade. I really like the color. Now this is going to be thick. I think this is maybe four to five ounce. Maybe. So we're going to have to finagle that into position. No, actually it's soft enough to really close up that gap still whenever we get to that part i'll still use the little rubber mallet and crazy horse has some nice pull up you see that no marks in here come underneath or bend it that's cool 
We're going to do that. So, transfer your body to the piece that you want as the body. This calls it the inside pocket. I flip it over, I go on the back. Now you can either use some type of stylus. Here's a really sharp point, and then there's a ball point. Use a regular pencil. I've kind of turned away from these because the 2B is a hardness level of pencil that digs in a little bit too much for me. One that I really like doing is a 6B drawing pencil. And if I had one, I would actually use an 8B. So the hardness level counts. This doesn't take much to mark on there. But if I really want to see the line, since so I'm on the back, this is going to be the size. I got a fine point pen. That's going to do just fine. Now for me, I try to make sure it's straight. I've picked these up off of Amazon. They're just right angles. A few different sizes. I put it up there. I can see I'm not that square right in the corner. So I'm going to find a square corner. At least something pretty square. And that's square enough for me. I'm going to get this little pocket. Again, it's the inside pocket. I'm going to lay it down right up against that square, so I'm up against that side and that side evenly. Leave that out the way. And I just mark a little on that side, a little on this side, a little on that side, and again. There you go. That's your body right there. Let's see if they're really showing off. I got little marks. Time to see them. Yeah. Okay, now that we got the lines here, everybody should have one of these. It's a ruler. Stainless steel ruler. So that's why I only did like two little marks. So I'd know where to cut across. Boom and boom. So, let me get him to cut this out, and I'll be right back, and we'll have this piece ready. Okay, we got it all cut out. It is the main body for the wallet. This is just a rectangle. Here's the back side, and as you see where I did little tick marks for the lines, it's no big deal. It doesn't show up on the project. Or it won't even show because it's going to be folded over on itself. So on the back side, flesh side, that's where you mark. And now, we got to make the outside pocket. That's where the Baroda Buffalo comes in. Let's get this ruler out of the way. Let's bring in the Baroda Buffalo. Now, where am I going to cut? I want something that's interesting. This looks pretty good over here. This looks really good over in this stretchy area. But, it'd be in the center, wouldn't really be seen. So, let's find something that looked good on both sides. So I'm thinking right here, probably trim off, I'll probably keep this piece for some keychain or something. So somewhere in there. All right, let me get this piece cut out and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got a piece cut out here and I'm actually going to show you how I cut this. This side... Yeah, it's a little furry, so, you no, know, the pen could work, but I want to get a good cut off this. 
So this is going to be the waste area I'm going to throw in the scrap box. And we are going to line this up. And again, I'm just going to do tick marks, but I'm going to use the stylus. Use the sharp point of it. Well, maybe not tick marks. Let's just go ahead and try to run it. Okay, let's see how it looks. Boom. I got my lines. Now cutting it. This is handy. I mean, you just got straight lines, so why not use them? Get the straightest lines you can by using this. And we're going to go to the Zacto knife. See what can happen. <laughs> Now we're coming up on the final cut, and here we go. And there's the outer pocket. Okay, so now we have the outer pocket cut. We have the body cut. You notice the outer pocket's a little bit longer. It's not a problem because bending around, this is on the outer side. This wraps it. This needs to be a little bit longer. And if it still overhangs when you're done, you can just take a little bit off the edge, off the ground, with a grinder, sander, whatever, or cut it. But we'll get to that when that you cross that road. So now, first thing I want to do is deal with this outer pocket before my memory forgets about it. I need to go ahead and across this top edge, go ahead and bevel it and burnish it and get it ready. Because if you don't and it's already on here, like you stitch it or glue it going around, you're not going to be able to get in there. So deal with the outer pocket first. Now with how thin this piece is, I'm going to go ahead and set it up on the body just so get a little bit of height so I could take my edge beveler to it and really get it. And oh yes, I remember this. This is a really fun one to bevel because of how it will bend up on you. So another tip. Break out your handy dandy ruler and get this in position first. Put your ruler along the area that you want to bevel and get her down. That'll allow you to apply even pressure across it and get a good piece off. So we'll use this on the front and the back. And again, I'm sitting on top of this, the other, the crazy horse, just to give it some height, because this is thin enough that my edge beveler would actually hit the table and not give me that good bevel like I'm looking for. All right, so this is longer than the buffalo, the crazy horse, not the buffalo, the crazy horse. So I'm going to do part ways, then finish it off after I move it. Okay. 
Oh, it's fighting me here. All right, for some reason it's not giving me a good bubble. It's kind of moving off. So I'm going to go back the other way after I get the rest of this edge. Some leathers are finicky. And this is sharp, so it's not that. So I'm going to go back across that area over this way. Maybe it's the grain. Who knows? It doesn't look the best, but it'll be okay once I get to get it get it down and burnished. It'll be all right. See, doing it just like that is wanting to dig in and take a chunk. Just kind of what what is doing down here. I don't know. It was just finicky. All right, I'm not going to bore you with the rest of it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, get these beveled out, and then we'll go ahead and burnish the top. Actually, about to make a mistake. I just needed these on both sides. These will get handled after they're on the wallet. So, that's again, you got to think of that. Okay, I just wanted to reiterate why I was about to make a mistake. I didn't need to do this edge, did not need to do these two either. I just needed these three. Here, here, and here. Here, here, and here. Again, the reason for that is that's not going to be attached to anything. That's going to be up. You'd want to go ahead and have that beveled out and burnished out. So yeah. Little mistake on my part, but I caught it. Since it's getting not attached right here, you want to do the front edges and the back. That'll give it that nice round roundness to it for you to burnish out. So that's why you do that. The rest will be taken care of after they're on the main body. So take note of that. Okay, now we turn our attention to finish off this piece before going to work with the body. We need to burnish these three edges now. You can either use a slicker. Uh, first, I think I'm going to try out canvas to see if it'll work. It's a little flimsy, but this may be able to do something. Or I even have a Dremel that has a burnishing head on it. We're going to start here. If that doesn't work, we're going to try here. If that doesn't work, then we'll go to the Dremel. So I'm going to speed this up so you're not sitting around with a boring burnishing stream. Little tip. Wipe away. Away. If you get it on the front finished edge, or else you will notice that there's like a shiny spot. You'll you'll see the token all on it. And that is what I'm using, just standard old token oil. Just a piece of canvas. Actually, it's art canvas. It's not even sailcloth. Okay, now what I could do, since this is slightly fuzzy, I could actually use the token oil, silicone brush to wipe it on, then slick it out with a glass slicker, which is somewhere, I don't know where, whatever. I'm not going to do that, because I think this will help hold on to whatever's inside the pocket. It's not bad, 
If it's really bad, yeah, I'd do that. But it's not that bad. I think it'll actually help out in the end. So, this one's done. I'm ready to move from this onto the main body now. Okay, so we're at the main body now. And just like that, we have to take care of the top before it's actually closed up. So if you see, it'd be folded over. It's going to be hard to get right through here if you forget it and actually burnish this top. Don't worry about the this edge. Wouldn't really worry about the bottom either because that's going to be closed up and all done as one piece after the pockets on it. So pick a top, either that side or that side. Uh, this one's got just a slight line down it. I'm going to make that the bottom. This will be my top. And again, just like before, edge bevel. And then you're ready to burnish. <laughs> As you see with the tokenol, it does not take a lot. I'll even show how much I actually kind of get on there. Very thin. I even got too much. There's still some on my pinky. And check the front if there's any. See how I'm wiping back with my finger? And there's not here. It's really up top. It's taking a second. I mean, some people say let it get tacky. You know, I could go straight at it after I put it on there. This, I haven't seen a difference between it. Do what's best for you. Do what you want to do to it. All right. I don't know if it'll show up that well. It's nice and shiny up there. So there it is. This one's ready to actually start working and start putting together. Okay, now we have our body and our pockets for the outside. You might notice the pockets are a little bit wider than the body. That's because when it folds over, it's got to take up the space and it evens out on this side. If it overhangs a little bit, that's not a problem. We'll take care of that in a bit. But what we're going to work on is one side first. I'm going to put some glue here. To here because I know about where I'm at center if you can see that line that I've created by folding so I'll go around through here up to the point that the pocket is and what I'm going to do is mark that point just use my little stylus And right here where it meets, I'll go underneath there. Just a little tick mark. That little mark right there. That's all I need. So. Let's get to this. And I'll, like I said, I'll probably go right about here. Now. The pocket side, you're working on the flesh side with the glue. The glue's actually got something to grab onto with this furriness. So you don't need to do anything special there. This part, though, I have a tool that just roughens it up. It's got little roughening bits to it. You don't have one of these, that's okay. If you got a Zacto knife, you can go along and just kind of scrape it. But you want to get an edge on there for the glue to actually grab hold of. So, my little roughening tool, since I have it, I'll use it. Just go down and just roughen up that area. Staying within my little mark lines. 
If you get to the mark line, go away from it. And here, as you see on these, there's a round corner. So I'm going to do a little bit more up through here. Just like that. So that's the bottom side and the side that I'm going to work on right now. All right. Another handy dandy thing is this silicon brush. It's still got glue on it from the last time I used it. Just take my fingernail, get under it. As soon as I find an edge, I can start pulling it up and it comes right off. I'll just start at the side here, see what happens. I highly recommend, if you're going to be doing a lot of gluing like this with contact cement, getting one of these. Or getting a few of them, actually. Never know. I think even paint doesn't stick on it. And there it is. All clean. Or at least clean enough to use. Now, here's the glue I'm using. Weldwood Contact Cement. They do make smaller cans, so you don't have to get as big as one as this. And what I need now is a lid remover. If I don't drop it. And this does have a scent to it. Let's get a little bit of glue. right to my points and glue it since it's contact cement it has to be on both both pieces this one and this one there it is that one's glued up now i just got to work this side right here Double check and see how far I'm going to go right about to there. And again, up in that little area, this one to be rounded off. There it goes. That's it. Cover your glue. You don't have to close it all the way because you're going to be using it again. Now, this glue actually has to dry before sticking it on. So I'm going to give it a few minutes, see how it feels. It's not even tacky yet. So got to let it dry a little bit and we'll be back. Now, I do want to say that the way I'm doing it is sort of optional. You could actually just go ahead and glue these two pieces together, or this one piece, and close it up, and then do this. But I like getting a square edge, at least on one side. And there it goes. It's glued on. Now we'll give it a little bit more time to set up with each each side for the glue to be there. And now from here, I'm not going to glue this side because see it overhangs. I will go ahead and close this one up 
and glue it. So let's set this set up a little bit more. So it should be well in set up right now. It's still going to be the same as before, except you're just going to be on the inside edges of this piece on the body. So this is why I didn't seal it all the way back down. I'm going to be going back into it. Give me a little bit of glue. And it's starting to run over the edge. Okay, got to watch for that. Because I don't want any on the front side. Now that I have a little bit of glue right here, I'm going to let that dry. And to get it up easily, use the eraser of a pencil and just get it off there. But first it's got to dry. Also, need to put glue along the bottom of this piece, the side that the pockets are on. Because you're going to have it go all the way across here as it folds over to close up the bottom. And since again, I'm rounding the corners, get a little bit on this corner. Not at the top, it'll get rounded, but that doesn't need glue there. These bottom corners do. Now, set, let that dry. Okay. It's really tacky. It's time. So what I'll do is I'll take the side that's not glued to this outside. Press it over and just kind of line things up. When it's at this point, it really tacky. You need to be right on it before pressing down. There's that part. Now you still got this gap. That's got to get pressed down too. You see, I still have that little loop right here. That's okay. So we got persuasioners for. So now it's down pretty good. What I will do is go ahead and start beating upwards. Not doing it real heavy. A little bit at a time. Just to get that down some. Then... You can bring this over and look at where you need to glue here. And then mark it. Now I got my mark. I could glue the whole way here and up to the mark. Just trying to even it out a little bit. Try to get it to dry evenly. And also, can't forget this piece. Blue's got to be on both of them. Yep. Yep. Now, time for it to dry. Okay, let's put these together. Just watch for this edge to bring it up here. It's okay if there's a little space back there. It's not that much of a big deal. So I'll bend it over and try to work this as close as I can over there. Which may not work that well, but also making sure it's lined up at the bottom as best as possible.
one step you could do when you glue something together just to make sure everything's connected tightly you can just take the mallet and just kind of tap away on it i'm not going to get that much on this there's a reason for it neighbor lives right there other side of that wall so i got a little way to make it a little bit quieter plus it's also handy to go ahead and have one of these because you're going to need it here soon handy dandy granite sink cutout and on top of that i could put a poundo board underneath it that could help deaden some of the sound i want to have it up here it still helps deaden some of the sound That's really all you need to do. That much is good. So there we go. The basis of it. Now I do see a little bit of overhang on the body. A little bit of overhang on the pockets. This all gets taken care of in the finishing project process of your edges. So don't worry about that too much. Now, one thing you have to do, round the corners. So let me get my tool and we'll do that. And I have these round, if you look in the face camera, kind of rounded. It's not total 90 degree edges, it's just made to round off stuff. And I got a few of them, different sizes. Oh, and shout out to Subsector 3D, who I hear in the other room. You may hear it or not, but I got her. She's streaming right now. So choose the size that's best for you. I think that's all of them. And for this, it's going to be this one. I mean, there is one smaller. But I use this one for nice rounded corners on wallet projects. So get your little persuasioner out. You got to persuade it. And the way I do it, I will kind of lay it back. I'm trying to get a 45 degree right here on the leather with this. So I'm going to get about a 45 degree. Then take the corners. Put them right up on the edges. It will move a little bit, but I'll try to stop it with my fingernail to get about to the point I need. And I feel if the if the points are on the edge, I may need to kind of walk it back. There's that. Here we go. Got a rounded edge. Is it perfect? Nope. But we're going to deal with that again whenever we work the edges. So up here, might have to press down a little bit to get this piece flat up at the top. Same thing. Try to get the 45 degree. Get the edge points of the cutter right to the edges. Here we go. Now we have the round spots. Here's where I start just a little bit of the edge work. I'll try to round off these corners with my Dremel sanding bit. I'll come down and start getting this a little bit flat, not completely. This is not my final spot. But I want the edges rounded, 
these kind of close, you'll see why coming up. Okay, here's my Dremel. And this is like a, I don't even know what grain this is. I think it may be a 150 or 150 grit, not grain. Maybe. It's pretty rough. Usually I do this closer to me so I could see it. And I'm not going too far up here because that's my burnished area. That's at its final area. And you can tell if a spot's high because it's not, or if a spot's low because it's not getting hit by the sander. There'll be a little color difference. And yes, this creates a lot of food. Be ready for that. Okay. So that's now sanded down basically to where I need it. And what it will do, it'll kind of raise these edges up all around on each side. If it's too much, then you go ahead and take your edge beveler. Don't try to bevel it. Don't come off the edge like that. Come right on top, very shallowly, and just try to knock that edge down. Or just thought of it, another thing you could do, persuade it down. Yeah, that works. Okay. I'll start doing that more often. Lots of floof. Now, you need to know where you want to put your holes so you can stitch it. So there's going to be holes all along here. And to keep it in line, you kind of want to use the longest one you have for longer runs. Here's a six tooth. This is a four tooth. I got a two tooth. I'm not using the six tooth because I've been using this so much. Teeth are coming out of it. I need to get a new one. But I will use the four tooth and the two tooth on it. To keep that as straight as possible, you want to mark your lines. I have a wing divider right here. It's already set to what I want. And you're not gouging into the leather. You're just trying to make a line just to follow visually as you're punching your holes. I'm not going to go too far up because it doesn't need to. Let's say I go right here. Now the Baroda, I don't know if you can really see that. I have to get in a light angle and I have to press down a little bit harder to make a mark. Doing it lightly is not working. Also, I don't, some people can, I can't. It's a hard thing for me to do. Try to follow it around that corner. So I'll go a little bit down and stop. Come to the next straight edge. Come on over. Now I will try to tackle the corner. A little bit at a time.
And with this, I will say you need to do it on both sides. The reason is I've found out with these other ones is I only want to go about halfway through. Follow the same line on the other side, go about halfway through to complete the hole. It'll push out the other side. Like if I got holes on this side, come here, punch, it'll start pushing the material out. Doesn't look as great, so I just try to keep those holes looking inwards as possible. So that's enough for this side. Let's get the next side. And there we go. I have my lines I'll follow. I'm trying to get it at an angle where you can see the ones on the buffalo. And I got the lines to follow on this side as well. Now we're ready to put holes in. Now we're ready to put some holes in this thing. My personal preference, I like using the round thread and round holes. You see up in the face cam, if it focus, these are round. And it differs from your stitching chisels, diamond points. It's all personal preference. Do what feels good to you. And so, I use round ones. Now, what I want to do to make these holes even across here without getting into trouble in this corner is right here in this corner, I want my first hole. Well, I don't have a one hole or, yeah, one hole punch. Some people do. I mean, if a tooth came out, then yeah, I'd have a one hole punch. But I don't. How do I overcome that? Take the two hole. I'll take one of the tines, put it right where I want it. Then I'll either go on that side or that side right on my line. So it'll be even spaced. So as soon as I do these two holes, I'll come right back into that hole, do another one on the other side. That keeps the space for me. Again, I'm not trying to go all the way through. I'll meet those up later. So I only go so far into it. But I have my first holes. And now I'll stick one of the tines in this hole that I started, the one that I wanted, and go on the other side. So I end up with three holes, but I'm covering that corner. From there, simply you go to your largest one, which is right now the four. And I can start my straight runs however far I want to. Just by following those lines, keeping it as straight as possible. So straight run from there. Straight run from there. I'm going to take a break, get these done, and we'll be back at it. Okay, we're here on another day. And you might see I already have all the holes popped out here. And I wanted to show you before I kept going further on this. How do I get these holes to line up on this side? Well, I'm about to show that. You remember the first two holes that I did? I did 
two of them the first time, then came back in that same hole and did the other one, so I had three holes. The very first hole, this one I will go all the way through. Here's how I'll do it. I'm going to take the one tooth, put it right in that hole, but have it hanging off the side. So I'm going to go ahead and drive that one tooth all the way through. Or could be there, could be right beside it at another mark. If, if say, you don't, like, I'm really tight up against the leather here, but I know the edge finishing will knock out any type of mark on the outside edge that that tooth might leave. If you're too tight to it, you may switch to another one. Over here, I got plenty of room. So that could give me one, my one hole, and I'll show you on the other side after I get it through. Remember, be straight up and down, straight, straight, you want to go straight down. And it still did not make it through. There's no hole on this side. I could keep driving. Finally, I got a hole over there. What you can do if you can't drive this through it and you don't have one of these sharp little, I don't even know what it's called, a saddler's. I, I wouldn't even, I don't know what it's called. It's a really sharp point. I could sh go right through holes and make holes on the other side. If you can't do it, get you a finishing nail. Just a really small nail that's long enough. And just drive a nail through. That way you could have your one mark. And I know this is the bottom one. So I'm going to go up here to the corner. So I got the hole, get right on my line, I think. And here, I will lightly tap. As soon as I go through, it'll start trying to find that other hole. And it'll straighten out. And I kind of feel it right there. Now we're trying to connect the holes. Again, if you don't have one of these, use a nail. That's my secondary hole. It has come through, so it's meeting. That's good. Now I do another one. Again, right on that line. If I can see it, this I got to get a light angle. Just a little reflection so I could really see that line. And I could feel it go right in. It's a feel. I could feel it go into that other hole. And give it a little more. And I could, right here. Points come through, it's connecting. So now I got my start point for this edge, plus some little pucker areas that I could kind of follow. And this is the pucker I was talking about. If I start driving through here and I go too far, you'll see this kind of pucker out on these stitch holes as well. Well, you lightly go back into those if they're puckering, lightly go back into them drive them back in, but just not far to where you cause the puckering again on this side. So there we go. That's how I get my holes lined up on this side to start my runs on each of these straight lines. Let me get to that and we'll be back for stitching. And I can show you what it looks like right after I'm done with these holes. All right, got all the holes all the way through. And 
doesn't look as pretty as I want to, but it'll work. Once it gets stitched up, that's kind of hidden. You just don't want it really puckery all around. You That would show up. So there we go. Now, got to get the thread. I'm thinking about this one. I believe this is gunmetal. I believe. So it might set off pretty, pretty nicely on this. This is the one I'm going to use. And I'm going to set up now and let's get some stitching done. One thing I do want to show here, and I'll show you something else in actually threading the needles. It's a little tip. When measuring out how much thread you need, some people say it's four times the amount. Uh, yeah, that works, but I give it a really wide four times. That's just me. I don't mind a lot of waste on the thread. Well, if I have this much thread hanging over that's going in the garbage, I'm cool with it. I mean, this, you see, this is how much I leave hanging off my needle and I can find my needles that way so my hole starts there I'm taking the end of this thread here and even past the wallet so I consider that one one time Give it a little bit more. Pull out even farther. So there's two. Give it a little more. Two doubled up. That's four. Right about here. And I got to find my spot to stick it back on the spool. So I got this much room. I'll cut it here. And also, I, since I use a little bit thicker, I'll cut at an angle to make it easier to get in the needle. Now for the needle, I'm actually going to switch over to my face cam to hopefully show this better. So usually, scissors over here. These are regular John James needles. These are not the Amazon ones. These are really good. The really thick Amazon ones didn't work out well enough for me. So first off, got to get the thread and the needle. have to look for a good spot so I can see where my thread's actually at. And it's kind of flared out a little. So I'm going to cut it again. And another reason why I leave all that room too is in case I go through my thread while stitching and I have to cut the needle and re-thread that. Keeps, gives me plenty of room to easily do that. All right, so normally I thread through the needle. I try to do that right here. And normally you go one time on the sharp end of the needle. Make sure you got enough thread actually going through it. Try to equal out the thread on each side so it doesn't pop. All right. So normally, there's that one time. That's the sharp end. I'll do it a second time. The reason for this, since I've been doing this, I have not had thread pull out of me on the needle yet. So, just like that. 
for those who don't know, it's kind of like what it looks like with the sharp end. Now take out some of the slack, pull this down, some of the slack out, pull this down, a little bit more of the slack right about there, pull it the rest of the way. This has not came off me, not come off the needle yet since I started doing that second stabbing of the thread. There we go. Now these needles are set up to stitch. Okay, well I tried to get some stitching footage and file got corrupted somehow, so it's not there. Anyways, I got it stitched up. You can see here. And to show you how much left over after measuring, this is just one of the needles. So yeah, I do have a good bit left over. But I throw it right back in here to my uh, little thing. I don't lose my needles that way. So there we go. This is now stitched. And is ready for the edge finishing. Now for the edge finishing, this is standard over and over and over for every wallet. Uh, I will use my Dremel to make sure everything's kind of flat first. Then I take sandpaper, lay it out flat on the stone. Just start rubbing away and sanding. I use a heavy grit, work to a, what is this, 500 grit. Just sand. And I think the other one, I think I got a piece right here, maybe not. Yeah, 220. I start at 220 because the sander, the sanding head on the Dremel is already maybe a 150. Do a 220, 500. I don't have anything finer than that. So from there, remember to bevel first. Then the sanding. From there, I will get the token oil, go down, start burnishing. Then I'll come back after the token oil is really dry, after I burnish it, go back to the 500. Back sanding it again. Look at it, see if there are any pits or anything like that. If there is, the 500 may need may not be what I need, go back to the 220, then back up to the 5, then the token oil, then burnish. Rinse and repeat. So it's a, it's a good process, but it can get you some good results. I don't know if you can really see the shine on that. So if you really want to see that, uh, I know people have done, to, done tutorials on burnishing edges or finishing wallet edges go watch those if you want to see this wallet completely finished um that right there ko-fi.com forward slash cadence that'll take you to my ko-fi page there will be a tab that says shop that's where this one's going to be this will be on the shop there so there you go that's how I make these. It's actually a fairly simple design. It's just slower trying to show you everything and give you little tips. But yeah. So I really like this card wallet. So hope you learned something. I mean, again, the links are going to be down there to the original video for these. And in that video, there will be links to the page to get the template. Now, go grab them. This video is done. Thank you all for watching. Uh, again, hit like, hit subscribe. If you want to know when I put another video out, click that little bell. 
it'll let you know and yeah be cool be safe everybody have a great time bye